I'm in the mood to talk about mm, magic work. Mm -hmm. When I say magic work, I mean the exchange of energy, um, whether intentional or unintentional, um, whether you did a spell to manifest it or, you know, the situation in nat nature manifested you know, a particular energy. Um, you have to be cautious of the energy that you manifest. You have to be cautious of when you walk into a space or in a situation or in a relationship, the type of energy that's there. When I was younger, a young person, I learned that my femininity, I learned two things about my femininity. As a male being coming up in the world, my femininity represented something that it represents in everybody, but just on different levels. It represented something that people didn't like, but at the same time represented something that people did like. And let me explain that. So if I go to a classroom for the first time, if I go to the classroom for the first time as a kid, I'm super, super nervous and I don't really want to talk because I know if I talk, then they're going to pick up on my feminine voice, my feminine way I talk, the feminine way I act. So I'm not a natural introvert. I'm like an ambivert. I'm like a middle of the ground. Like I'm not an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. I'm kind of that, that in-between thing. Um, so take an ambivert and turn them into an introvert, because, not out of, because that's where they naturally are, but out of, I don't want any negative consequences to come by me showing who I am. Like showing my natural being, my natural feminine self. You know, that was something that I couldn't do in a young age because because it created a space for bullying. Okay? I would be bullied, bullied in... Um, chased home from school or had to fight people because I also had a fighter spirit in me. So I rarely got chased home from school <laughs> without me having to bash. <laughs> so, um, so on one hand, it brings this kind of negative energy to me that makes people lash out at me in anger and in Bullying in that, in that bullying spirit, but at the same time, it makes people attracted to me. Like there would be boys who would try to engage peers, not well older boys too, but it, never older boys, not men, but teenagers, peers my age groups. They would try to put themselves in sexual situations with me. Like, these are just young boys that's my age or older than me. Not older as in, like, men. Because no, I've never been, um, no man has ever molested me in regards to, um, in my young, 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 young years. But my peers, they picked up on the femininity and they interacted with it. I remember when I went to, um, a group home. No, before I got into the group home, I went to the Guardian home. And at the Guardian home in Indianapolis, the it looked like a really old school school. That's what it looked like. It looked like an old school school. And I think that's what it was. It used to be a school, elementary school that they turned into like the Guardian home. And I remember taking a shower and we had the stalls that had turned into showers and I'm taking a shower and something tells me to look up and I look up and it's this boy my age named Mario looking down into the shower at me naked 
And he was like, you should let me come in there with you. Now we're kind of, oh, we're really, this is like, it's like 12-ish, was it 11? I hadn't trans quite transitioned yet, so it had to be 11-ish. Between 11 and 12, because my, my transition started at like 13. But about 11 and 12, and he sees me in the stall, and he's trying to, like, have sex with me, get me to play with his penis, him play with mine, and this whole situation. And that was, like, the dichotomy of my youth, where... I wasn't sexual. I wasn't sexual in regards to. Um, I hadn't had sex yet. I never approached people. Like that's not. That never was my thing. I was. I, I didn't know anything about sex at that age. But people always, either my femininity, either in, made them engage me with hostility or engage me with sexuality, and that's my whole life has been. So balancing that and protecting myself from that, exploiting that, my life has been a, uh, has been about dealing with that and using that to my advantage. Um, me getting into escorting, when I got older, that's a direct exploitation of that dynamic in my life. You know, oh, you want to use me for, um, you want to be attracted to me sexually and sexually only what I know connection, then why don't you pay me, motherfucker? Pay me. Trick. <laughs> so, you know, and then you have people who, you know, interact with me with hostility, family and school and all that kind of stuff. So, when I was younger, I had to learn that no, I had to learn, but I hadn't learned it yet. I validated myself through sex. It validated me. It made me feel like a woman. It made me feel feminine. It made me get... I told you that touch is really important to kids. <laughs> it's really important to hu being a human being. So... With all these people trying to bully me, not having a really super uber affectionate mother. She was sweet to me, but not super, super uber affectionate. And then she was going through, my mother went through this thing where everybody was telling her, because I was a feminine boy, oh, you baby that boy too much. And she's a woman who doesn't want her son to grow up to be gay. So my mother f started to become emotionally, I want to say emotionally, um, she was not affectionate. She that people were telling her, "Oh, you gonna turn that boy into a faggot?" So she turned into a more cold mother, and so that that affection, that touch, that important touch, that exchange of energy, that magic work, you need it. <laughs> and so, me needing that as a child grew to me. exploiting that that kind of energy that was coming to me exploiting that sexual energy that was coming to me and um so it used to be fearful it started to be a fearful thing where i was like why is he treating me like this like why is he um why is because of how i am giving me this kind of negative energy. And I almost relate it to how women grow up in this this Jezebel and Virgin Mary dichotomy world where they are um they're taught to be pure, but then they're sexualized too. You know, this just weird thing and um and so growing up in that world as a child with that, without the mature mind and the mature view of patriarchy and feminism and, you know, the things that you learn as you become an adult woman, coming up as a child, navigating that can be really difficult as a girl child. So I imagine, not exactly, but um, I imagine that that 
that kind of may be along that line. So I grew up learning to exploit that sexual being that people were um, attributing to me. This grew. Um, I got older. It just grew. And the more the more testosterone driven boys around me become, the more and more it um it peaked. But I also had a bougie there was a bougie side of me. So because my girlness started to form during this time, my my growth into a woman, the ideas of what type of woman I wanted to be started to, you know, steer what I was doing and how I interacted with men. So now I'm seeing that girls are supposed to be this pure thing. So the sexuality that I used to exploit kind of slowed down and I stopped dealing with dudes on a sexual level because I wanted to be a good girl. I The world hadn't killed my hope to find a guy that was going to like me and treat me like the girl that I am. And, you know, I, I, the hope was still there. That whole little white picket fence, movie, romantic, fake <laughs> idea was still there. You know, when you get older and you get your heart broken and, you know, things happen that you got to really realize that this is the real world and it doesn't work like a movie. That hadn't came to me yet, so I still was trying to um, get that. So in order to get that, my mindset was in order to get that kind of life, you need to be a good girl. And so I turned into a good girl. I turned into where, you know, don't come at me like that. <laughs> oh, while the other girls were starting to prostitute trans girls, um, were starting to prostitute, there was there was a stuck up nose up in the airness about me when it comes to prostitution. You know, so but that that energy, that that magic work that still came, I still wanted to feel that touch. You still want that intimacy. And so yes, I would pick one boy that I would have a crush on. And oh, I would make up all these excuses to why he treated me like he does, why he's calling me at one o'clock, why he's sneaking and hiding me. Oh, he's straight, so he can't he has to have pussy. He has to be with a real woman because I'm not good enough. But I'm good enough to suck his dick. I'm good enough to, you know, whenever he feel like it. Whenever, he, whenever he's feeling this gay thing, quote unquote. And then he'll go through this process where he don't want to do it. <laughs> because I'm not gay and I'm not doing that no more with you. Even though he initiated the action. Um. And, and now you got to understand that the we we're both young. We're not, um, you know, we're not, you know, neither one of us is mature and experienced in life. So we don't, um, you know, we just don't have that maturity. So, but we do have these needs. That's this 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 need. And so, uh, I would be in relationships with men that. We're so unhealthy. Now that I'm older and I can look back on it, I'm like, bitch, what what kind of self-esteem did you did you have? Because I never felt like I was ugly. <clears throat> I never felt like I was worth it, worthless. I never felt like there was something about me that wasn't worthy of love. What I felt was that being what I was didn't allow people to love me openly. So it wasn't about my worth. It was about me compromising to make me fit into their world, to make me fit into this world in a way that wasn't um, impeding on their happiness. So I'm sacrificing the what I really want to get that touch, to get that feeling, to get that, um, that affection. And so I went through my teens and my 20s 
making all type of crazy compromises for men. All types of crazy compromises. Um, going too fast and um, allowing them to have regular girlfriends and while wow. even I remember I went to the prom and the guy that I had been missing with in high school he took a regular chick to the prom and I felt I wasn't going to go to the prom because of that but there was other circumstances that came along that forced me into going to the prom not forced me but you know pushed me into going to the prom but I wasn't going to go because I knew he was going to go to um I knew he was going to be there with the girl. So, as I got older, that exchange of energy, that magic work, had to change. I had to change my spells up because that kind of energy was keeping me, wasn't making me a better person. It wasn't making me love myself to the full potential of who I am and what I deserve. So as I got older, I learned that I didn't need validation from men. And I have to add the escort thing too, because I have to add this. Why escorting was so appealing, other than the money, other than the money, the money is always the elusive thing. Oh, you can get your surgeries. Oh, you can get your body done. You can get your titty. You can get you get all your stuff. Oh, so quick, so fast. Quick money. <laughs> These old tricks that love you. Quick, quick, quick. And it didn't really go quick. Because <laughs> you're getting all this money and you financially immature. And you're spending it on bags and shoes and makeup and hormones. And, you know, all these things and... Your money really, it doesn't, you don't have the maturity to save. Some people do. Now, this, this is just me. I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> Some people do. I didn't. I didn't have the financial lessons for my family. I didn't have the financial responsibility. And so it took me a while to save up money for surgeries that I wanted. Um, so anyway, escorting, it, 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 besides the money, this is what it did for me. I don't know what it did for everybody else, but... When I came into the business, I didn't start escorting until I was like 23, 22, 23. Now, in college, I had turned one date. It was my very first date, but I'll make that another video. Um, and um, it was, oh, I'll have to tell you how I felt about that. Um, but you got to understand where I was. I was coming into a place where I wasn't fully developed as a woman. I've always been, um, not as I say this as humbly as possible, somebody telling me that I'm cute or being attracted to me or thinking I'm handsome as a boy or pretty as a girl, that's always been a part of my story. So I don't, I've never felt ugly. Like I've never felt, um, nobody ever was like, are you ugly? Or, um, you know, I just never had that kind of, beat down with my image and that's never been my journey but when I became a trans woman being critiqued became a part of my life and being critiqued emphasizes the flaws that you do have <laughs> so you can be pretty but bitch you're still clocked <laughs> or you can be um you know, you look kind of like a girl, but you're still tall. Oh, you look kind of like a girl, but I see, still, still see them hands. I still see them feet. I still see this or whatever your flaw is. Not necessarily my flaw, but, you know, you know, people will pick them out. So you're, and during this time, all people, your peers are engaged in intimate relationships with people. Maybe not having sex, but people are having boyfriends. People are having People, you know, that they're getting to know on that romantic level. And here you are, this tranny that nobody wants to be romantically involved with at all. Uh, out in the open or, you know, unless it's secret trying to have sex with you. So you don't have that kind of healthy intimacy. So when you come into 
the business and you have these men giving you their hard earned money to come to your hotel room, to come to your place and worship you. Like literally tell you how beautiful you are. And yes, I know this is being objectified and you know that this is just a fantasy for them. But honestly, it's not really a fantasy. They do think you are beautiful. They do like your body. They do like the fact that you are, you have the male stuff and you got the female stuff. They really do like that stuff. <laughs> they really do. And they might say it to all the girls that they date, <laughs> but they really do like you and they appreciate you. They appreciate your transness. Nobody else is doing it. Your family is not appreciation, appreciating your transness. Um, the guys that you kind of interact with in real life are not. They're trying to slut you up on the down low, trying to um, invalidate your womanhood, trying to, they're trying to do everybody else is giving you all this negative slack about who you are and your gender identity while these clients are calling you your right pronouns. They're telling you you're beautiful. They're telling you they love your height. They're telling you they love your skin. They love your cock. They love your tits. They love everything about you, your pretty face. Don't underestimate the importance of body language. <laughs> so, um, Little Mermaid. <laughs> Um, so they love all of this stuff about you and they really do and they're worshiping it and they're sacrificing their hard earned money. Money is important. If somebody is sacri sacrificing their money for you, that, that, that has value. And, you know, I don't know if you guys, um, if you guys read, talked about the language of love, the, I don't know if it's five languages of love or seven languages of love. I can't remember. But when I took the test about the language of love, the language of love that speaks to you, mo to you most, what I got is acts of service. Acts of service is my language of love. That's how I recognize if somebody loves me. Acts of service. And acts of service is when somebody does something, an uh, act that helps you makes your life better. If you come and bring me to work, if I if you see me walking and you pick me up and bring me to work or you come and cook me a meal, come and take my trash out cuz you know I hate taking the trash out or do some kind of act of service for me. That are th those are things that I value. Like you can't be a person that just comes buys me gifts because that's 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 a Gifting is an act of love, too. Some people find those things important. I don't. So, um, or um, words, um, God, words of encouragement. I can't remember. Y'all have to research that or whatever. Figure that out. But some people are really like you to, to hear words and you hear you say, I'm proud of you. I love you. W words are really important to them. But me, acts of service are really important to me. So somebody doing the act of giving me money to take care of my bills, to do what I need to do. You know, and clients have a tendency to, to really take care of you because they want you they want you to, to continue to have access to you to fulfill their sexual needs. You know the arrangement. And so that arrangement for a person who has that exchange, that magic work, that exchange of energy for a person who for a person who love language is acts of service, you can easily fall in love with a client. And I have. <laughs> so because they were, because he was the one who was doing for me and making me feel special and making me feel loved, doing for me is really important. Especially if you're doing something that keeps me stable and makes my life better, especially as a trans woman, being stable, have a place to live, have a food to eat. And those are luxuries that a lot of trans women don't have. So somebody taking care of those things for you is it lends it's, it lends me to believe that they love me and it's not really real. And I can that's just keeping it gutter. I, I really have been in situations where, oh my God, this is a client, but I'm falling in love with him. And I shouldn't be unhealthy relationships <laughs> um exchange is exchanging that energy that negative energy how can you and so now as a 
trans woman that is stable on my own, stable on my own, who don't need a lot of acts of service, or I can recognize legitimate acts of service and bullshit things niggas do just to try to give you a draw. <laughs> Just to keep access to you. Because there's a difference. You're not gonna, I'm not going to fall for you telling me, oh, I love you, please. Let me have sex. I really love you, baby. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let me just give me, let me stick the head in. <laughs> they tell you all this stuff. That stuff don't move me to give you no pennies. <laughs> you know, acts of service do. So sometimes I had to recognize that sometimes those acts of service are just as phony as, oh, baby, I love you. You so beautiful. Oh, oh, baby, baby. Oh, oh. They're just as phony as that. They just have the means, the patriarchal means to be able to give you something that you need to keep them having access to you for sexual purposes. And I didn't recognize that when I was younger and I didn't recognize that I was thinking that this was real and it was what and it wasn't. And so when I got older, a more stable place, I changed the type of energy that I would allow into my space. I know how to when I'm do exchanging this energy with a client or with a person that I know is not really serious. Like I don't have clients now, but when I when I have when I'm with a guy, I can tell when it's some fucking bullshit. When I'm exchanging and doing the magic work, doing this exchange with this guy, whether it be our energy and in interacting, or even we're just hooking up on a sexual nature, um, I know when this isn't real. I know when to cut this off. I know when to know that it's time to be realistic about the situation. When previously I would be using sex, I would be using that intimate touch, I would be using any kind of interaction with a particular man to make him fall in love with me. I want to give you the best head. I want to fuck you the best. I want to do all of these things. And so many times they would tell me, oh my God, you are the best. You are the best. And sometimes telling the truth, sometimes not. But and they could be telling the truth, but they I still don't want to love you. I still don't want to be in a relationship with you. Or the worst ones is I actually do love you, but I don't know how to engage in this love in a healthy way because I wasn't taught how to or because society has me scared to engage in this love in a healthy way. So I don't at all, but I still love you and I still want to have sex with you and I still want to keep our relationship, keep access to you because I do love you. That's You got to understand that too with some of them out there like that who don't know how to engage in that magic you got going on, that they love and that, that exchange of energy and, and that magic work that we do. I don't know how to engage in that and it'd be safe for me. And I feel safe in there, in that space, in, the, in that exchange of energy. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to work through that. So now where I'm at as an adult is I'm turning into a bitter tranny. <laughs> I'm turning into, I'm turning into an angry black woman. <laughs> no, I'm just kind of losing that hope. And I'm I'm tur I'm turning into that trans woman who thinks that this just comes with the territory. Like you are a woman of trans experience. Regular women have a problem with being sexually objectified. So you coming in as a person that is considered an abomination, a person that is considered less human to some people being considered less human or less worthy of respect that lends people who are going to sexually um objectify you to not eat not give a fuck about you even more because the society tells me not to give a fuck about you but i can just use you sexually and not really give a fuck because nobody gives a fucks about you same thing with the killing i think it makes it easier for a guy to kill a trans woman because society itself as a whole doesn't give a put value in our life and doesn't give a fuck about our life so it's the same thing with the sexual nature oh i can risk i can oh let me fuck you raw baby 
because, you know, you're a tranny. Like, I don't have to give a fuck about your life, but I'll go to my wife and use condom and be safe and protect her. That's some, some, definitely something you have to... I, I, definitely something that I feel. I think society plays a part in the lack of care, lack of value of trans people's lives. So because of that, I'm at a place where I don't think I have no hope of finding love. I don't think I have no hope, but I am preparing to be alone for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'll do some hookups when I need that touch and that feeling. And I need that intimacy. But until I I find somebody that's gonna kinda step up to the plate, you know, I just, I don't know. As I get older, I don't know if I'm ever gonna find that. And most of the girls that I see with boyfriends and husbands, it's out of necessity. It's out of... I see them having boyfriends that don't got shit, and then a girl has something, and they're just kind of mooching off her. So they're taking care of the man because he doesn't have anywhere to go. He's burned all his bridges. And so... Or they're going through drama where they cheating on them with regular girls or... I'm cheating on them with other trans women. And, you know, I just can't, I can't deal with all of that. (laughs) I'd much rather just give my money, live in my own house, paying my own bills, um, and, you know, just, just do the magic work on my own. And it's almost like it's the same, but it's just I can recognize it now. I can recognize that this this magic we exchanging ain't really about that shit. It's just fun for the moment. So I'm going to keep the exchange in the moment. And I'm not going to let it linger on and be magical after, after it's over. It's just magical in the moment. And, you know, when I feel that, when, whenever I find that magic that really has some sustaining power, then, you know, I'll make that magic work. So, I don't know. These are my thoughts. I hope it touched you some way or made you think about your own life. (laughs) This is your girl, Diamond. Have a wonderful day.